a huge ancient city hidden underground in Mexico. Which LIDAR has uncovered a lost Maya megacity hidden beneath the jungles of Mexico. Archaeologists have uncovered the remains of a nearly 3,000-year-old city. An astonishing network of temples, plazas, and roads stretching farther than archaeologists ever imagined. What we don't see is that 60 percent is underground. But this discovery is raising even deeper questions. What secrets or treasures still lie buried beneath the jungle? And how could a city so vast and advanced simply vanish from history? The Accidental Encounter Archaeologist Luke Ald Thomas was driving through the lowland jungles of Campeche, Mexico, a region dense with vegetation and ancient Maya history, when something extraordinary caught his eye. The ground beside the highway looked almost like a buried blueprint, rising in clean lines, too regular for natural hills and too straight for random erosion. But finding out what lay just beneath the surface would require LIDAR, light detection and ranging, a technology that pierces jungle canopies with laser light to expose the hidden geometry of the land. It was archaeology's sharpest instrument, but also one of its most expensive. So, rather than fund a new expedition, Ald Thomas dove into the digital archives built for ecologists and forestry scientists. Endless grids of LiDAR data designed to map the jungle and carbon storage. Buried in that data, he suspected, lay traces of an ancient world forgotten by history. After weeks of searching, he found it. A 2013 LiDAR survey, originally conducted for environmental research in Mexico's tropical forests. This raw data held millions of laser points, mapping every contour of the jungle floor. Using archaeological algorithms, Ald Thomas began stripping away the jungle one layer at a time till what remained was the ground itself, exposed in digital form. Lines became edges, edges formed rectangles, and rectangles stretched into platforms and corridors. When the final image came into focus, it spanned more than a hundred square kilometers, nearly the size of San Francisco. But what struck him wasn't just the scale of this discovery, but the absence of any trace of it in official records, as though a whole section of Maya history had been quietly skipped over, unseen by archaeologists and the government. Because what lay beneath the jungle canopy of Campeche was far from random. It was the very skeleton of something vast, deliberate, and lost. The Lost City of Valeriana Ald Thomas named the newly uncovered city Valeriana after a nearby freshwater lagoon, an ancient metropolis with more than 6,500 structures etched into the landscape. From the layout of residential platforms, plazas, and ceremonial complexes, Valeriana appears to have supported between 30,000 and 50,000 people at its height, a population comparable to major Maya cities like Tikal or Kalakmul. This was no minor outpost or farming village. It was a true urban center, a network of causeways, reservoirs, and courtyards engineered with striking precision. Yet the LIDAR revealed something even more astonishing. The city's oldest architectural cores appeared to date to before the second century, pushing the timeline of Maya urbanism back by several hundred years. It challenged one of archaeology's longest standing assumptions that the great cities of the Maya only began to rise during the Classic period. For context, at its height, the Maya ruled the heart of Mesoamerica, their cities stretching across what is now southeastern Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, and beyond. They raised stone temples that dominated the jungle canopy, charted the movements of the stars, and engineered cities with mathematical precision. Few civilizations matched their brilliance in art, writing, and timekeeping. So when researchers said the great Maya cities had already been found, no one doubted them. The jungles had been scanned, mapped, and photographed from every angle. There was nothing left to discover, or so it seemed. Valeriana proved them wrong. The evidence was unmistakable. Hidden beneath the jungle canopy were clusters of pyramidal mounds, broad platforms, and elevated roads stretching from one district to the next. The layout showed careful planning, balanced, geometric, and as deliberate as the great Maya capitals. Unlike many lowland cities that expanded gradually, Valeriana seemed built from a master design, its neighborhoods connected by raised causeways that blended engineering with ceremony. As archaeologists examined the scans, a striking pattern emerged. Valeriana's neighborhoods mirrored one another, repeating shapes, angles, and proportions that hinted at a shared blueprint. This kind of organized design was rarely seen in the early Maya world. Valeriana was no ordinary city. It was evidence that large-scale planning had begun far earlier than scholars once believed. And if a metropolis of this size could lie unnoticed beside modern roads and farmland, what other cities might still sleep beneath the jungle? 
As Ald Thomas and his colleagues began to study the spatial patterns and architecture more closely, one fact became impossible to ignore. The geometry of Valeriana didn't match what was expected of its supposed era. The city was far too organized, too advanced, and too early, and the deeper they analyzed the grid, the alignments, the roads, and the distribution of civic structures, the clearer it became that Valeriana could rewrite the very timeline of Maya urban evolution. The Patterns Discovered Across the scanned area were the foundations of thousands of structures, their precise patterns revealing an order, a hierarchy, and a glimpse into the minds and daily lives of the people who once shaped them. One of the city's most striking landmarks were its temple pyramids that rose on high platforms, their bases broad and square, the kind built to support shrines and sanctuaries where ritual and power converged. From above, the alignments were unmistakable. Many of the pyramids faced the rising sun, an orientation that carried deep spiritual meaning in Maya culture. These temples were not just places of worship, they were observatories of time, used for marking solstices, equinoxes, and the changing of seasons. High on those temple summits, the rituals of the Maya world unfolded in all their solemn intensity. Priests and rulers gathered to make offerings of food, incense, jade, and blood to the gods. Itzamna, the creator, and Chak, the bringer of rain. Bloodletting was also central to these rites. Kings and queens pierced their tongues or ears, offering their life force as a bridge between earth and the divine. Within these temple chambers, the spirits of dead kings were venerated, their remains resting beneath altars thick with the scent of incense. And on festival days, the ceremonies turned darker. Captives were led up the steps, their sacrifice believed to feed the sun and keep their world in order. These same temples also served as places of coronation, where new kings were inaugurated amid offerings, speeches, and public displays of power. To the east of the temple platforms, LIDAR also detected the ghostly outlines of eye-shaped courts, perfectly symmetrical and unmistakably human in design. These structures were used for the Maya ball game, a powerful mix of sport and ritual. Played with a solid rubber ball that could weigh up to four kilograms, it required extraordinary strength and precision. Players were forbidden to use their hands or feet. Instead, they struck the ball with their hips, elbows, and knees, keeping it in motion through sheer control and endurance. In some versions, the goal was to drive the ball through a stone ring mounted high on the court wall, an almost impossible feat that transformed each match into both sport and spectacle. The games were often tied to cosmic symbolism, victory and defeat representing the balance between life, death, and rebirth. The discovery of ball courts here confirmed that Valeriana shared the same sacred traditions as the great city-states of the classic Maya world. Between the pyramids and palaces lay vast plazas, wide, open courts that served as the public centers of Maya life, where processions wound through the dust and incense, rulers addressed their people, and merchants gathered beneath the sun. Here, ceremony met daily life. Religion, governance, and trade intertwined in open space. Even beneath centuries of forest, the LIDAR revealed their precise sweeping squares and corridors arranged with mathematical intent, rivaling the civic grandeur of any known Maya capital. One striking feature was the presence of amphitheater-style patios, shallow, stepped enclosures that curved inward like open bowls of stone. Archaeologists believe these spaces hosted gatherings, performances, or councils where leaders addressed their people. Their shape allowed sound to travel naturally, a detail that proves the Maya shaped their cities not only for grandeur, but also for the experience of sight, sound, and ceremony. Further down the landscape, LIDAR exposed an intricate network of reservoirs and dams. These were engineered water systems, carefully placed to collect and channel rainfall during the wet season, as well as store it for use through the long dry spells. Trenches and embankments connected them like veins, ensuring that water reached both ceremonial and residential areas. This single feature showed that Valeriana's builders were not just architects of stone, but masters of ecology, who adapted their environment rather than fought against it. Running through the city's expanse were broad, raised causeways, ancient highways that stitched the city together. They ran straight and unwavering, cutting through hills, forests, and swamps with geometric precision. LIDAR captured their full width and direction, revealing routes that connected temples, plazas, and distant residential zones, suggesting processions and trade lines once followed their paths. Around the city's edge, archaeologists also identified long-stepped agricultural terraces cut into the hillsides. They were built to prevent erosion, manage rainfall, and transform rugged terrain into fertile ground. This system sustained tens of thousands of people, 
and archaeologists believe the terraces once nurtured maize, the sacred grain that sustained both the body and the spirit of the Maya world. Perhaps the most fascinating discovery was the presence of E-groups, a distinct architectural alignment used across the Maya world to track the sun's movement. In Valeriana, one of these groups stood prominently on a rise near the central precinct. Its western platform aligned perfectly with the sunrise on solstices. This was no coincidence. The city's builders intentionally linked architecture with astronomy, weaving science, religion, and governance into a single design. LiDAR data further revealed that Valeriana was divided into three main zones. At its center stood Monumental Precinct 1, the ceremonial heart where rulers, priests, and elites lived among the tallest pyramids and grandest plazas. It was the city's public face, the stage where power was displayed and ritual performed. To the south lay Monumental Precinct 2, a secondary complex that combined temples, reservoirs, and the ball court. It functioned as both a sacred and administrative district, managing water and regional affairs. Surrounding these centers was the peripheral zone, consisting of hundreds of household platforms spread along the slopes. This was the residential area of the city's working population, the farmers, craftsmen, and families who sustained Valeriana's monumental world. The builders of Valeriana designed a city that responded to terrain, water, and the sky itself. And the more archaeologists examined those patterns, the clearer it became that this discovery wasn't just architectural, it carried implications that could rewrite what we know about how Maya civilization evolved. The Implication of Valeriana's Discovery The LIDAR exposed a flaw in what experts thought they knew about Maya civilization. For years, scholars imagined the Maya world as a patchwork of independent city-states, separated by wilderness and distance. But Valeriana shattered that illusion. As a result, researchers now believe that settlement density in this part of Campeche is significantly higher than previously thought. If additional sites of similar scale are confirmed nearby, it would mean the forest once supported a network of interconnected cities, evidence of a far more integrated Maya world than scholars had imagined. Perhaps the most striking conclusion is that Valeriana may have been a regional capital of the Mayan Empire that mediated trade or diplomacy between larger cities. Some researchers even suspect it once rivaled Calakmul, not in size, but in function. Its scale, complexity, and proximity to natural corridors like waterways and fertile lands suggest it may have served as both an administrative hub and a strategic buffer in the geopolitical landscape of the late Classic era. The discovery has also changed the pace of archaeology itself. With every new scan, LIDAR is rewriting the map faster than theory can keep up, revealing entirely new patterns of settlement that textbooks still struggle to explain. Valeriana doesn't ask where the Maya lived. It asks how much of their world we've yet to uncover. But digital data is only the first layer of truth. To uncover the real story of Valeriana, archaeologists must now step into the jungle itself for fieldwork, a slow methodical process that gives context to the pixels. Each coordinate on the scan represents a possible structure. Archaeologists will begin by walking those coordinates, mapping the terrain with handheld GPS and drones to confirm the structures on the ground. Once verified, shallow test trenches will be excavated to recover ceramics, obsidian tools, and fragments of plaster, offering the first physical evidence of life in Valeriana. The ceramics will hold the first real clues. Their form, decoration, and clay composition reveal patterns of trade and chronology. Even a single rim fragment can identify a distant workshop or identify who Valeriana traded with and which cultural sphere it belonged to. If the pottery aligns with materials from Calakmul or nearby sites in Campeche, it could confirm a network of exchange that once tied the city to the heart of Maya politics. Alongside the pottery, researchers will analyze tools and building materials, from chert flakes to jade ornaments and carefully cut limestone blocks, to identify the industries that sustained the city. How these materials were made and distributed may reveal as much about power as any royal tomb. Evidence of centralized workshops or standardized stone cutting would suggest that Valeriana operated under strong administrative organization. To establish an accurate timeline, researchers will use radiocarbon dating and stratigraphic analysis. Charcoal, burnt wood, and organic residue preserved in plaster layers can be dated to determine when structures were built, modified, or destroyed. These results will help correlate Valeriana's phases of construction with broader historical events such as droughts, conflicts, or migration. Perhaps the most astonishing evidence will come from the burials. In Maya cities, the tombs of elites were sealed with jade beads, stingray spines, or carved shells meant to accompany them into the afterlife. 
If similar graves lie beneath Valeriana's ceremonial core, they would confirm not only the city's political status, but also its spiritual alignment with other Maya cities. Each tomb has the potential to reveal genetic, dietary, and cultural links, clues to alliances and lineages that shaped the city's rise. And within its buried roads and temples may lie the first real clues to one of history's greatest enigmas. How did an empire of cities vanish into jungle and myth, and what happened to the people who built it? What happened to the Maya? Environmental stress remains one of the most visible factors in the Maya collapse. As their cities flourished, the land began to pay the price. Generations of growth drove farmers to push deeper into the forests. Trees were felled to clear fields, firewood fed lime kilns that built temples, and the fragile soil beneath began to erode, making the once stable seasonal cycle unpredictable. Geological and botanical evidence like pollen, charcoal, and sediment cores all trace a clear decline in forest cover during the late Classic period. When the forests thinned, the rain followed. Climate records from lakes and stalagmites reveal that between the years 800 and 950, the Maya world endured a chain of devastating droughts. Entire cities, dependent on stored rainwater, faced collapse as reservoirs dried and harvests failed. Even the engineered systems at Valeriana would have been tested beyond their limits, their channels and basins straining to hold a sky that no longer gave. But nature alone didn't bring the civilization to its knees. Political fragmentation did. As resources dwindled, alliances faltered. Neighboring city-states, once bound by trade or marriage, turned to warfare. Stone monuments record rival kings turning on each other in chilling detail. Cities burned, captives paraded, and victories claimed in the names of the gods. Each conflict drained manpower and trust, fracturing the networks that had held the region together. These fractures extended into the cities. Centuries of rigid hierarchy had placed wealth and power in the hands of a small elite, nobles and priests, who claimed divine authority through ritual and bloodline. But when the rains failed and wars multiplied, that sacred legitimacy began to crumble. Archaeological evidence from several sites shows signs of social unrest, monuments defaced, elite compounds burned, and ceremonial buildings abandoned mid-construction. People began to walk away from the cities that could no longer protect or feed them. Trade, once the lifeblood of the Maya world, also faltered. Obsidian, jade, and cacao had moved across vast distances through networks of rivers and causeways. As warfare blocked routes and populations dispersed, long-distance exchange collapsed. Without it, economies that depended on imported goods began to fail. The cities, deprived of essential materials and tribute, could no longer sustain their administrative cores. And yet, it wasn't total extinction. The Maya people didn't vanish, they adapted. Many migrated north toward the Yucatan Peninsula, where new centers like Chichen Itza rose. Others moved into smaller rural communities that endured long after the great capitals fell silent. If researchers can determine when Valeriana's water systems failed, when its structures were abandoned, and how its population shifted, they may be able to trace the same pressures that affected other cities across the region. Archaeologists could finally begin to map the collapse of the Maya civilization as a physical phenomenon, not just a historical one. Already, LIDAR surveys across Guatemala and Mexico have uncovered dozens of forgotten sites, each with traces of adaptation and abandonment. Some were fortified, others built near new water sources, suggesting people were responding to crises in different ways. What do you think brought the Maya to their knees? Drop your answers in the comment section below.